Hello, hello again to another Agricola reaction. Today it's another date night with Eric and Shadow. And looks Shadow. Like it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Shadow's here too. Mm -hmm. Some snuggles and stuff. She's always here. Just in the background. Mm -hmm. And today we'll be watching? Uh, on this day, January 26th is a National Peanut Brittle Day. The history of peanuts and peanut butter. From Fire of Learning. Mm-hmm. It's a good channel. It's a very good channel. Let's watch it then. Let's Sorry guys, you won't see the this cute the face peanut. anymore. Oh, also known as the, the goober, oh. the pindar, the monkey nut, and quite a few other names, here. which people don't really okay. use much these days. When it was first discovered by foreigners, mm -hmm. it was slow to catch on in many parts of the world. For quite some time, Americans and Europeans disregarded it and saw little use for it beyond feeding livestock. Yet today, peanuts and the products made from them are incredibly popular. The majority of people watching this, in fact, have some sort of peanut product on their shelves, especially Definitely. Americans and Canadians. <laughs> what is Kinda the story behind you this humble you love that changed yeah. the world? Delicious. I hate Ladies peanuts. Ladies and gentlemen, hello and welcome to Fire like the Learning's taste of Food it. History Series, a series in which we tell the surprising See? and I amazing said, stories I don't like of the peanuts. foods we eat every day. Taste of it. Thank you for joining us in this episode as He's we still discuss offering them the to history me. of peanuts oh, and peanut butter. It's rude when you already know that I don't want to take it. Where mm. did the peanut come mm -hmm. from mm -hmm. in the first place? Americas. The peanut seems to have originated somewhere in South America. The oldest archaeobotanical South evidence America. of peanuts still America. has been found in the Zanya exactly. Valley of northern <laughs> Peru. I said Americas. Roughly 6500 yeah. BC. <laughs> Botanists are skeptical that the peanut was actually first domesticated in Peru, however, and suspect rather that it was first domesticated elsewhere, somewhere less dry, where remains would have been less well preserved. This seems to have been perhaps somewhere in central South America, likely the area of southern Bolivia, Paraguay, and northern Argentina. From there, as time passed, it spread throughout South and Central America, reaching as far north as modern-day Mexico. The peanut appears to have had great significance to the peoples of South America since ancient times. Uh, yeah, Pottery it's decorated quite... with images of and even shaped like peanuts has been found dating to roughly 1500 it is rather BC. And the remains of peanuts fiber. themselves mm -hmm. have been found comes. in ancient tombs, presumably yeah. as food for the afterlife. As a food that tasted good and stored well, this popularity is not surprising. The people of Peru retained their love for the peanut, and it remained a commonplace food in the Inca Empire. However, though it reached Mexico, it does not seem to have been as popular there among the Aztecs, who made no pre-Columbian written note of it. The first Europeans to encounter the peanut were the Spanish. It is possible that Christopher Columbus and his crew were the first Europeans to encounter them, but the Catholic missionary Bartolomé de las Casas, who encountered them on Hispaniola in 1502, was the first on record to have encountered them. He wrote of his encounter in 1527, saying, quote, They had another fruit, which was sown and grew beneath the soil, which were not roots, but resembled the meat of the filbert nut. The filbert These nut. had thin shells in which they grew, and were dried in the manner of the sweet pea or chickpea at the time they are ready for harvest. They are called mani." End quote. The huh. Spanish and Portuguese encountered them all Never over Central filbert and nuts. South Never. America in this time. Interesting. The scientific name of the peanut we know and love is Arrakis hypogea. Hypogea, or Ipogaea, means under the earth. Peanuts are geocarpic, meaning that once its flowers are pollinated, a stalk-like structure grows from it called a peg, which grows into the ground. This is where peanuts grow. Peanuts, peanuts by the way, are only considered nuts Kinda. in the kitchen. Yeah. Botanically, they're legumes, the more closely related to peas and beans. It's I mean, I'm just curious how the fact that I just learned Europe recently itself, how they the grow. The first record of them there comes that from they a doctor actually in Seville, Spain, blooming above and then they move into the sun. It's, eating it's them really fascinating green, for me. Dry and toasted. From there, the peanuts spread throughout the European continent, being planted in gardens and becoming more popular in European writing throughout the 17th century. Europeans also spread the peanut to places like Africa and Asia. They became more popular there than they did in Europe. The peanut was introduced to India in the 16th century and China by the early 17th century. 
the Chinese called them foreign beans. From China, it reached the Japanese, who called them Chinese beans. The first record of cultivation in England comes from 1640. It is not known when the peanut first reached colonial America. The first clear reference to peanuts dates to 1769, but they are regarded as something already present throughout the southern colonies in this reference. It may have first reached Anglo-America from the Caribbean, though Sir Hans Sloan speculated that peanuts arrived to the modern-day United States not from Latin America, but from slave ships from Africa. Hmm. Peanuts were a common food in Portuguese outposts in Africa, and were adopted by the native inhabitants of many areas along the west coast as well. Indeed, peanuts spread across Africa so quickly that early botanists assumed they originated there. As a food that stored well and was popular in the area, they were a common food for both slave traders and slaves themselves, and seemed to have spread wherever slaves went. African slaves referred to peanuts as unguba, or mpinda, depending on where they were from. These words became guber and pindar, respectively, in English. Despite its spread, peanuts did not become popular in the United States or Europe themselves for quite a while. There was some commercial farming, men like American founding father Thomas kind of like with Jefferson I came from some, the for example. However, could, peanuts fare potatoes, better in climates warmer tomatoes. than that of the northern they did, US they were just northern grown as a and ornamental harvesting thing at first. them prior to the industrial era was difficult and time-consuming. Besides, it was regarded as a food for the poor and for mm. livestock. In particular, pigs. Oink. Accordingly, in these regions, its popularity was limited until the 19th century. In the early 19th century, however, American references to peanuts become more common. They were becoming a snack food, a natural course for a food that was portable, cheap, and stored well. They were sold by vendors on the streets and during shows, like theater performances and circus acts. One contemporary complains about the Peanut Fellows, referring to rowdy spectators who left messes of peanut shells all over the ground at shows. These rowdy sections of the audience became known as in Peanut Galleries in no. the later 19th century. <laughs> it was in the mid-19th century that the popularity of peanuts in America grew further. The Civil War itself likely helped to popularize peanuts somewhat. Firstly, Southerners and Union soldiers in Southern territory could not always afford to be picky, especially during times of food shortages, and thus ended up discovering a fondness for this legume. Secondly, there was increased demand for oil during the war for a number of reasons, which peanut oil helped to satisfy. A number of names still existed for the peanut in America during this time. Goobers, Pindars, ground nuts, earth nuts, ground beans, etc. The word peanut was actually a later edition, first recorded in 1794, but by the 20th century, it had slowly won out as the favored name. It was in the early 20th century that the popularity of the peanut truly took off. Not only was demand for peanuts growing, well, but technology from, from was beginning to make peanut harvesting and production easier. It was now that people were beginning to see the true potential behind the humble legume. Like in the early 20th stuff. century, hmm. southern agriculture was in need of serious don't. help. Yeah, I don't know. Cotton I'm just was asking. overplanted, okay. depleting the soil. And worse, was under attack from a pest called the boll weevil, which devastated production. Agricultural scientists at the time encouraged things like crop rotation to help solve this issue, but farmers were reluctant because of how profitable cotton was. One famous scientist who worked to help solve this issue was George Washington Carver. Of all the alternative crops he promoted to southern black farmers, he is associated most with the peanut, for which he promoted and invented hundreds of uses from new recipes to things like peanut-based shaving cream and shoe polish, though very few applications took off. Peanut production exploded during the First World War, and its cheapness and usefulness allowed it to continue to remain popular throughout the Great Depression, Second World War, and into the modern day. However, peanuts, and especially peanut butter, never did take off in Europe to quite the same extent. Speaking of peanut butter, who invented that? Technically, 
The Incas, who made a kind of paste out of peanuts, could be said to have been the inventors of peanut butter. That is, of course, debatable, though, because that wasn't quite peanut butter as we know it today. The Aztecs are often mentioned as inventors as well, but this seems to be a mix-up, as again, peanuts were not used much, if at all, by the Aztecs, at least prior to Columbus. It seems that the Dutch were making pinta queza, or peanut cheese, in their South American colony of Suriname by 1783, which was similar to peanut butter, but much more solid. It is possible that there was a kind of peanut butter made in Cuba in the early 19th century that made its way to New York. However, the first clear, modern version of peanut butter seems to have been invented in Montreal, Quebec by a man named Marcellus Gilmore Edson, who obtained a patent for it in 1884. Ten years later, it was produced and sold by an American businessman in St. Louis named George Bale. Not long after, Dr. John Harvey Kellogg created and patented a form of producing nut butter which included peanuts, and was one of the first to advocate peanut butter as a high-protein alternative to meat, which he served to his patients, namely those who had difficulty chewing. By the end of the 19th century, people were putting it on bread, and it wasn't long after that that people were pairing it on bread with jelly. In fact, the first record of the peanut butter and jelly sandwich dates to 1901. <coughs> peanut butter was actually expensive at first, but as production improved and became simpler, and as things like partial hydrogenation Pond, extended shelf lives, yeah. it began to evolve yeah. into an American yeah. staple. Huh. So During it's the World there. Wars, oh, it was well, a popular it solution yeah. to feeding the nation at home Mr. and Pino soldiers fighting abroad <laughs> while meat was rationed. Today, the peanut and its most famous product, peanut butter, are as popular as ever. 90% of American households report consuming Can peanut it? butter on a regular basis. Nice tinta. <laughs> Overall, the world grows almost 50 million tons of peanuts per year, the leading three producers being China, India, and Nigeria. Hmm. And there we have it, the peanut, the humble legume which changed the world. I hope you enjoyed this video. If so, I invite you to come check out the rest of Fire of Learning and to subscribe to see more videos like those of the Food History series and more in the future. To support the channel, a donation on Patreon would be a big help. The link to- no. okay. Let's give that one. Hey, if you like that video, go to the Patreon page. Yeah. And, uh... All the details are in the description box as always. Yeah. Those are interesting. <clears throat> I knew peanuts came from the ground, but I didn't know who originated the peanut. So yeah, you, didn't, you didn't know where they were yeah, from, like? Yeah, exactly. Okay, so now you know. Well, yeah, you me being from the United new. States, it's, uh, everything comes from the United States. <laughs> the internet, peanuts. Mm -hmm. Jelly. Jelly. Apples. Yeah, everything from the United States. Yeah. <laughs> At least you're being sarcastic about it. Yes, yes, definitely. <laughs> we yeah. steal from everybody else's ideas. Mm. <clears throat> well, so in our household, there's a big, big divide about peanuts. Eric absolutely loves them. Love peanut butter. I absolutely hate them. Yes. Yeah. I can eat them. I have no allergy, nothing like that. I just don't like the flavor of them. The, it's like the, you wearing lipstick. Get away! Yeah. No! Yeah. <laughs> I don't wear lipstick. I just wear chopsticks. Same thing. It's not the same thing. Chopsticks is for keeping my just, my lips nice. Mm. Well, don't like makeup. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's true as well. Like he loves peanuts. I love peanuts. Like peanut butter. Peanut butter on celery. Mm. You haven't had any ages. I've never I seen you having that. Oh. I bought celery sticks and. Yeah, and he never and he never used them for the peanut butter. He just good stuff. he just used the peanut butter for peanut butter and jelly. Sandwich. The most recent thing they have a hazelnut spread. It's like a chocolate spread. And having chocolate toast and then chocolate and peanut butter together, kind of like a not a Reese's brand peanut butter, but just the cheap version of a mm -hmm. peanut butter and chocolate together on toast. Mm -hmm. Which yeah, comes out quite tasty. Sleepy. Cheaper too. Mm. That's what he likes, so that's what he has. Mm. Um, yeah, but... Well, that was interesting, though. I like it for... Oh, pizza. Pizza dough is ready. Yay! That's uh, dough for dinner. Oh, oh, Shadow, Shadow. Why are you being such a messy? Messy cut. That's why things are breaking. Though. Come on, Shadow. Leave that alone. Yes. That's probably why. Maybe it wasn't you breaking it. <laughs> okay, but maybe that was Shadow. See, you took all the blocks. 
Yeah. No, I've definitely made tripped over a few times. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, <coughs> so, is something else to add? No. Did you find this interesting? I did. It's a video. I always love good. It's good, good video as well. He makes them very nice. Yeah. yeah. I watched a few of them. There was a history of strawberry as well. Interesting. Okay, well, not today. Yeah. Whenever the strawberry day is now. Come around, along to the, this year. I'm gonna tr try to do something about strawberries for you. Oh, nice. Okay. Ah. Thank you very much strawberry for watching. Butter. Mm. Sorry. Thank you for watching. Strawberry or is it strawberry jam now? Or jelly? Actually, strawberry jelly and peanut butter. Preserve. Preserve? Yeah. Is it all the different things? Yes. Jelly, jam, don't preserve. Care for it's all different. I don't really care for jelly. I like preserves and jam. Mm -hmm. Jelly is like. Yeah. I made some strawberry jam last year. He still didn't eat it. So Just especially, especially for Eric to have it with his peanut butter. He <laughs> still didn't eat it. We, we make our own bread now, so yeah. for breakfast, I'm in a rush. Yeah. Are you gonna make now one well, for tomorrow, or are you gonna make it tomorrow? Probably eat tomorrow. We'll oh. see. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Then. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.